I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. Until now, I haven't even considered the thought of how I would even make money if I tried to do this. Have you? I just thought about the passion, the idea of doing it for a living, and how. The money was the part I realized is kind of what makes it all possible, isn't it? Okay, so my question this week is, how do you pay yourself? So the other side of it too is, if you pay yourself, do you have somebody that manages the money for you? And that comes down to really how much you're comfortable with letting others manage your money for you. Some people can do it, some people can't, some people don't want to do it. So we'll hear about the different ways that the people I spoke with manage this. Laura and her sister over at Anthology, they get a commission because they also put their own work into the store. So if I may quote a TV ad from the 90s, they're not only the owners, but they're also a client. Sorry, that was really dumb. We have always had a salary. So um, we have that, but basically we're also getting paid for our work just as any consignment artist mm. is. And so at the beginning, it was just like a lot of hustle because it was just like, well, if my paycheck is low this month, it means that I need to make more stuff next month mm. in order to bump that up. So that's always something to consider but yeah again i think you know coming from that retail perspective we we get paid as employees of the store you also have employees yes so i do most of it i have an accountant who comes in at the end of the year to help me get everything ready for the tax preparer but a, you know, sort of the day-to-day -day stuff is it's also split between my sister and i she like writes all the checks every month for the consignees and then i do the payroll and like the quick books Tammy at Bohemian Bobble says that she has someone else do the books because she hates that. She runs a theory by me that uh, she thinks bookkeeping is actually a conspiracy to keep you from actually becoming a business owner. I used to do it all myself, but yeah. it makes me insane. I was going to say, you don't sound too happy about it. I'm a really good bookkeeper. Okay. I'm a Virgo, so I'm pretty organized and detailed with my numbers, but mm -hmm. I just don't like the going out to the forms that don't even speak English to you. Who knows what those words mean? And it's ridiculous. They really don't want people to be self-employed, is what I think. Because mm. they want you... I don't know what they want, but they don't want you to make your own money. So yes, I employ a bookkeeper. Well, I'm a bookkeeper, but she still does my... She does QuickBooks for me. I don't want to know about QuickBooks. Here's my numbers. You plop them in. You don't and give her a bucket full of receipts. I do not. Okay. I'm the good girl. Okay. I have everything lined out for her. So, And then I, I do have a tax person, but I've been having issues the last couple of years with finding a consistent tax person that mm. I like. So I'm still looking for a tax firm to work with. Mm. I was working with one that worked with small businesses, but I think I was too small for them. So they didn't really care about me. <laughs> right. I'm like, I am the epitome of a small business. Yeah. Do you go by sole proprietor or are you LLC? This I'm an LLC. Finally this are year. You? Okay. After like that seems 20 like a years, <laughs> I had to have my bookkeeper do it. I was like, I will pay you whatever you want to, to go set up my LLC for me. I don't like dealing with any of that stuff. Yeah. It's just a pain in the butt. And if, mm. if it's not, if it's not how you're wired, and I'm not, mm. it just doesn't go well. I hear you. I Leah and Rebecca at Booth 121, they just started making minimum wage, but it lets them do what they want. We've we just started yeah. to, like, regularly. Yeah, regularly take a certain amount each month, which is, a, it's, I work mine out, it's under minimum wage, you know, for the <laughs> yeah. hours that I put in, and I'm sure mine is for same. Rebecca. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, we make enough to live. We're not driving nice cars or... <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're able to do that, but one of the reasons we're able to do that is because we do sort of have the safety net of, oh, crap, something happened, so we need to take a little bit extra this month. That is... It allows us to be like, no, we're going to take the minimum. You were paying yourself before just in necessity, not in paychecks. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't think for the first year we really, either of us paid. You didn't take anything home? No, no. Okay. 
anything that we made was invested. Like, I just need twenty dollars because I have to stop and get some yeah. milk and bread on the way. Home. Right? Yeah. No, it was that bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. will I have yes. anything? You know, yeah. there is no extra mm. anything. No vacations. No nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say we suffered. No, we didn't but it, suffer. But it, it was here is our goal, and how bad do we want it? And we did look at. At, and we actually sat down with the banker for about 15 minutes. And do we actually want to take out enough money so we can actually pay ourselves a decent salary mm-hmm. and really build this thing up? And then ultimately we said, no, yeah. <laughs> we're okay. I really like knowing that if something were to happen, anything were to happen tomorrow, we don't owe anybody any money. I always make sure there's enough to cover our bills to make sure our vendors are always paid on time. Mm-hmm. What's left over from that, we reinvest into wholesale. wholesale items. And that's how you were doing the renting when you first started out, really, it was just kind of you were making it to pay it off. Some months, we were not, yeah. But then couple. something would happen, and yeah, you know, everything always pieces. ended up working out. <laughs> so we should probably mention that our husbands are both very hard workers, <laughs> 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 and, and they support, support us. us. Yeah. yeah. Anastasia at Confectionique pays herself as part of the bills each month, but it's according to the market. I do pay myself. It's like one of the bills that we pay right away okay. is, is myself. We always make sure that our artist vendors get paid first. We have their tags. We know what they made, so we make sure that we pay them and, and that they get paid. And then we pay all of our bills, and then I get paid according to basically how successful the market was. In general, I, an hourly wage, kind of figure out, Twelve to fifteen dollars an hour. I mean, I do think it's important to pay yourself, but honestly, look at this paradise. <laughs> I know. I have a very nice studio at home too. I have a fabric room, a whole creative table and creative space. I play the drums, so really, I'm a drummer. yeah. Nice. So I've got a nice drumming section down there too, That's... so that I can drum, then I can go craft, then I can drum, yeah. then I can go craft. Oh, cool. We have okay. somebody that manages mainly the taxes. I our accounting is is truly not very complicated. Not okay. really. We don't have a, a lot of bills other than just renting and energy costs. We don't have lines of credit that we have to pay. Nothing like that. Yeah. Uh, everything we deal, we just pay for it right away. I have some wholesale accounts, and I just pay for them. I don't set up lines of credit or anything. So there's the way we do our system is very simple. We write out the receipts by hand, too. You know, people bring their goods up, yeah. and we hand write it out. And Tammy at Hatch Art House doesn't pay herself, really, but she says she doesn't really need to. I've never taken a paycheck. I recently started taking my cut of my sales from Hatch, the things that are mine that sell. And just like the art- other artists, would, every month I write them a check for their portion. So recently, like in July, I started doing that okay. for myself. I'm like, I want to get a little something. So otherwise, my accountants say I don't need to do it. And it's really not, I'm not there. I'm not big enough. You know, once I started hiring employees, that's a different ball game. You know, you have payroll and all that kind of stuff. And and insurance and you know there's just so many facets to that where it's best for me to pay a professional and just not have to worry about that and they're on top of it they ask they'll they'll let me know if something's off you know I make enough to pay my bills and to pay the artists and I make sure that everything is is taken care of there's never been a a month in the seven years that an artist hasn't gotten paid on time Mm -hmm. and I take pride in that I've just as an artist and having been in shops before this and, and hearing just horror stories from some artists about not getting paid and whatnot, hmm. that's always just been something that, and that's just my personality too. It's like, yeah, it, they need their money. Yeah, some of the places have prided themselves on the fact that they paid the commissions on time. I didn't realize that that was a thing that could happen. It e- either goes where they're just not very good at bookkeeping or right. they don't have the money on hand. John from Mother Fools takes a small paycheck, but they own the property in the building that they use. We do have an accountant, and his main role is our taxes. I don't do our business taxes, but on a day-to-day basis, I do all the payroll taxes. I do payroll. I do the accounts payables. You know, so I do all the normal day-to-day accounting. Plus, um, nobody likes doing it except accountants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He seems to enjoy it. You're right. <laughs> or at least he. I think he actually does enjoy finding ways to make it work for his clients you know yeah and i enjoy myself doing the payables and kind of staying on top of that i've had times where we've had a manager doing that 
but I, I find that it's way better for the business if I'm hands-on with it. Schedule of when you have to pay it and when we get deliveries and how often and in what way we interact with them. So as my goal is just to kind of be aware of all that and yeah. make sure that the cash flow is always happening at the right time to pay it. As far as how I pay myself, both Stephanie and I take a small paycheck from here. It's not enough to live on, but it, it pays some of the bills. And we take a small amount of money and then health insurance, and then we do own the property and the building, so we're accumulating equity over time. You do own the property and the building? Yeah, we bought it in 1997. Wow! Um, and that was in order to be able to expand because the city had given us an ultimatum. We either had to cut back to 16 seats or add a second bathroom, because we only had one bathroom at that time. Huh. And it didn't seem plausible we'd be successful at 16 seats. So how did you decide to buy the building? Like, how did that come about? I didn't feel like I was willing to do a $25,000 project, which sounds funny because that seems so little, but at the time that was a massive project. We'd be shut for a whole month to do it, you know, so I wasn't willing to do that to a property I didn't own. I just felt like it didn't, there, the lease we had didn't really protect us from, he could rent out from under us or raise our rent for the improvements we just made. Yeah. You know, so I just didn't want to be in a situation like that. So I called the owner of the building. He came over, I told him, I said, we need to do some improvements and I just want to know if you're open to selling. And he said he was, he absolutely was. But he wanted me to know some things. We went up on a roof, he showed me the condition of the roof wasn't good. He said, you're gonna have to plan to replace this. Very kind man. Hmm. And then he made me an offer that was actually below market rate. And I learned later, a month later, at the closing, that he had been offered a lot more money for this. Really? And he didn't because he liked what we were doing here. And hmm. it, between that and Jean, the former owner, doing her no interest loan to us, it really gave me a solid framework to see business as something that can, can be community enhancing. You can make business choices that work for you and for the community that you live in. Yeah. You know, and both of them did that. And it, it, it's a constant inspiration to me. Yeah. That is really cool. The neighborhood, when I was asking that question mm -hmm. before, I think mm -hmm. that is really just community driven, but strongly opinionated, but also everybody just wants everyone to get along mm -hmm. and to help each other out. Mm -hmm. I love that. Sarah from 11000 tells me about how she still has to use QuickBooks herself. But she also bases her income budget on a book called Profit First by Mike Michaelwitz. Michaelwitz? Sorry, I can't pronounce that name. But it's kind of an interesting take on how to do it. I now have an accountant, Marge, who is fantastic, okay. who does our taxes. But I do my monthly bookkeeping, and I use QuickBooks. It's like the bane of my existence. <laughs> But yeah. my consultant, who I get through Wibbick, my loan officer, um, she tells me that I will love QuickBooks someday. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. No, no. That's someone who loves math telling you that. Right? I know. That's <laughs> what I say. I use Square for my payroll because we have an employee right now. And I pay... I've been reading this amazing book called Profit First. It's a really great system, and I'm still learning how to use it, but it helps me understand how to do bookkeeping and cash flow management on a monthly basis. So every month, any income that comes in, I split between five accounts. One is owner's compensation, and so that's how I know how much to pay myself. Another is profit. Another is taxes. Another is expenses. And his idea is that when you distribute money that way, you are starting to automatically account for profit. And if you're a business and you're not making a profit, you're not really a business. And so you, if you, you know, like the old system talks about sales minus expenses equals profit. Mm -hmm. Well, his approach is that sales minus profit equals expenses. So a sale for $100 comes in and you put $10 aside, you're going to figure out how to run your business off $90 mm -hmm. versus whatever's left over is what I'm going to have as a profit and whatever's okay. left over is how I'll pay myself. So I'm trying to start our business out that way. Right. It's a very different way of thinking, but that helps me feel comfortable with setting aside some of the money to pay myself because otherwise you just get scraps. Mm -hmm. And then like, why did, you, why did we even start businesses in the first place? if we can't pay ourselves anything. And really thinking of paying myself as separate from profit, I think that's a lot of a 
a lot of business owners and especially creatives don't think of those as different things. Like they almost feel guilty for thinking about having a profit for their business. And I guess I didn't know that you could also manage that type of thing in Square. I mean, I knew Square was a sort of a cash register sort of yeah i just use it for payroll and for well that's what i'm saying like i didn't even know you could do it for that i knew it was essentially kind of like a manageable credit card or at least that's the way it started out Mm -hmm. but i guess i didn't know that it had expanded that way yeah we all of our e-commerce sales come through square too so it's synced with our wordpress site mia from stone fence says that she waits for moments when the business is going well to pay herself i take a paycheck if everything's going well Okay. And I don't if it's not. You just base it on? Uh, you know, usually things roll along and I take a paycheck with everybody else. But if you have those months that are tight, then you don't take one. And you said you do the books, but you also have an accountant. Does he help? He or she help with that? Yeah, he does the taxes and he does my payroll. And then I do balance my own checkbook. And Although he'd laugh if he hears me say that. <laughs> of course they will. <laughs> I try to balance my own checkbook. You wouldn't use them if you knew how to do that. I get that. I can, I, I can barely add anything. <laughs> and Kyle from Pieces Unimagined says being self-employed is just the way that he lives his life. How do you pay yourself? I look forward to the day that happens. <laughs> it's, it's not an uncommon <laughs> answer. So, uh, so it's like you never think of that when you talk to people. It's, it's not an hourly wage. It's well, not a salary. Self-employment for me is more just like a lay, way of life. So context, the worst part of being a pastor was getting a paycheck. Oh. Hated it. I like the idea of... The flux. You just live for the excitement of what's going to happen. It's a bit today. excitement. You're like, yeah, will we pay the bills this month? I don't know. <laughs> but then next month will be wealthy. It's, yeah. it, it's called periodically poor, periodically prosperous. I realized there was an actual term for it. I like that. Do you have a an accountant or do you deal with the taxes and stuff like that yourself? I have an accountant that deals with the details I don't like. So you do so, still have more of a hands-on thing, but then... I'm more hands-on, but when it comes into the legal stuff, unemployment insurance, and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. I stay a million miles away because I can't afford to make a mistake on line 38B. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know that they told me they don't really take a check or that they don't really pay themselves, but the confusion that I still kind of have is if they're not taking money, how are they living? How are they paying for their homes? I guess that's the part that I really didn't understand out of all of this, but clearly they do. I did meet these people and they have lives, so that may take a little more looking into. If you haven't already, subscribe to the show at American Bandito slash subscribe or listen on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, YouTube. And of course, if you have an Amazon Echo or a Google Home device, just say, play the American Bandito podcast. That's awesome. The music is by Romcom. To hear more, go to AmericanBandito.com slash music. And I'll be back with another show next week. So until then, so long. Mm-hmm.